Welcome everyone to our Wednesday call and we're going to talk today about cats just um, a little bit because we have a lot of new people here so um, if you have a comment you want to share it you can put it in the chat you can also if you're low tech just raise your hand if you're on camera um, if you unmute yourself I can usually see um, so just feel free you know you can speak up but we usually try to keep everyone muted while we do our talking and then we're going to open it up for questions uh, we have Kelly here, who is more of a kitty expert than me. As I said, I um, cats just aren't my thing as much as dogs and horses and wild animals, but I do like tigers. So I think that counts. <laughs> I'm less afraid of tigers than I am a domestic cat. So I'm not sure what that says, but um, the, the tigers, at least, I don't know, you can kind of see if they're going to get upset or they want to bite you where other cats like Bootsy just bit me. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure if I would have been paying more attention, I could have seen that he was getting overstimulated. But Kelly, welcome. Let me make you, um, let me make you, and Monica is here. Yay. So for those of you who don't know, Monica uh, works at a shelter in Croatia. So you might have seen some of her um her blogs that she's written about animals that she's helped with the Let Animals Lead method of animal Reiki in Croatia. And Carolyn's here. Yay. So let me get everyone muted and let me uh, make Kelly co-host so that she can unmute. There we go. So yeah, we're going to talk about animal Reiki and cats because even though the Let Animals Lead method, we have a pretty um, formulaic routine that we go to when we go sit with any animal. You know, we ask permission. Um, we always see them as a teacher and a healer. Um, there's just certain things we do. But when we're going to sit with, let's say, cats or dogs or horses, we also have to take into consideration their um, personalities and their, you know, and who they are as a being. So cats, have their own way of communicating and doing things just like dogs have their own way of communicating some of the signs are the same you know raised hair if they're upset like horses have a certain way of communicating so we just want to be really mindful of that and i'm really grateful that kelly's here to talk about this because kelly has like i said a lot of experience with cats cats are her jam she's mother of cats if you will and so it's it's really nice that um that she's my partner here and can help with this because as i said so kelly you missed it i had bootsy my sister's cat on my lap he's a tuxedo he's about eight years old and he's a biter and so mm -hmm. trust him and i can usually tell when he's getting a little you know, weird because he puts his ears to the side or his eyes get dilated. But sometimes like he had his head down, he was being really sweet. He will just kind of turn. One day he grabbed my arm with his, his arms and he bit my arm and I wasn't doing anything. I was working on my computer. And my mom said, cause she's a cat lover. She said, he wanted your attention. And I'm like, I really wish he would tap me on the shoulder or do something a little nicer. It scares me when he goes to bite me and he grabs me. Right. It's like, Oh, good God. And he's big, he's fat and he's, he's just, yeah. So, so when we're talking about animal Reiki and when we're going to go sit, um, with a cat, there's going to be different considerations, especially if you go into a home, one consideration, if you go into a shelter, that's a different type of consideration. So I just want to say, before I turn it over to you, Cal, to say a few things, I want to say hello to Celeste. And Vicki and Ava, thank you so much for joining us and welcome. I think this is your first time here. So thank you all so much, Ava. I'm not sure if you heard I had said welcome. Um, thank you so much for coming. So again, if you have a question, put it in chat. Or if you want to make a comment, you can raise your hand if you're on camera. But if not, you can unmute yourself. And between Kelly and I, we'll try and see uh, who has unmuted. So welcome, Susan, and welcome, Sharice. Oh, my gosh. I think that kitties are an actually a very popular topic. I'm so glad yeah. to do this. Right, Kel? This is great. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh. So, um. Yeah, thanks for asking me to do this today, Leah. Um, I'm just going to ask everybody to mute themselves if they haven't. Yeah, um, I can do that. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm. Oops, 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 Kelly. I just muted you. Sorry. Oops, has to unmute. Sorry, sorry. I got overzealous here. 
There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. That's okay. I've had plenty of technical difficulties, which is why I was a few minutes late. So, um, but I just wanted to say that I'm in no way a cat expert. However, I have had cats for a long time and, um, and also uh, spend a lot of time with the cats at the shelter. Um, I know there are other people on here. I see some faces I know are cat experts too. So, um, or spend, or have a lot of um, information and are cat lovers and long time um, cat people, um, protectors, whatever we wanna call ourselves. Um, so I think um, one of the things that I really love about working with cats is you can't make a mistake. <laughs> you know? It's really, I mean, you, you don't want to make a mistake, let me say, because it's really easy for them to get um, get frightened, scared, uh, especially in a shelter situation. Um, we um, we really want to be aware of their body language, um, make sure that we're not. And, you know, a lot of these rules are, are common to what we do anyways with the other animals. The cats are very sensitive. Um, you know, when we work with dogs. Dogs are often easily distracted by what's going on. A squirrel runs by and their attention is gone. Um, but cats are on high alert all the time. And um, and so I, I find working with them to be similar to working with alpacas. Uh, I used to teach in an alpaca farm and actually I'm gonna be teaching in an alpaca farm soon. But, but what's really um, interesting is they have the same sort of response. Um, you know, we have to be very, um, I feel um, I'm very slow moving around the cats. I don't want to move too quickly or um, or even move at all. Uh, I think that they do really well when we're just sitting peacefully uh, and doing our meditation. So um, I, mean, I have a, one of my favorite stories was at the shelter in Rutland where I, I volunteer uh, Reiki every week. And they have a big cat room. And at the time they had about 14 cats in the cat room. It's a good size and well, you know, all kinds of things for them to climb on in the walls and little hidey holes and stuff and and um little beds on the floor. And I was just at the back wall sitting and doing my meditation and I was had my eyes closed and and then um after a few minutes I opened my eyes and all these cats were staring at me. They were like from all these different areas in the room. It was really funny. And they were all just um, you know, just very still. And, it, you know, the stillness also kind of reminds me of Ngozi, the crocodile who I've talked about before. That stillness is, um, but they're, they're completely on alert. So, um, so some of the things that I notice is that, um, you know, when I go in the back room uh, with the cats who are in intake, I want to be very careful um, not to get too close to them. They're in a wall of kennels. So when I, I walk in, I see who's in there and I say hello to each of them individually, but I don't get up there in their face. I don't get near the kennel. I just sit down on the floor against the wall. Um, I, I notice that as I do my meditation, sometimes the ones in the back who are hiding behind their litter box might come out a little bit or they're watching every move I make, um, but we don't wanna act on that. We wanna make sure that they are the ones who come to us always. I mean, and that's the let animals leave method anyway. So um, I find that with cats though, um, you know, dogs oftentimes, dogs will run right up to you. And it's not like there aren't cats who won't. Um, I've seen this happen with Chip who's here and Judy who's here, um, you know, at the shelter and they just come wandering over and they want to be in your lap. And, um, and so um, Another thing that, you know, we want to be aware of is like you were saying, you know, the big dark eyes, you know, the, you know, the big pupils, uh, ears back, obviously hissing. We all know that sign, but sometimes people don't recognize the flicking of the tail when the tail starts flicking. If we're petting a cat, stop. <laughs> it's like the first sign that it's going to go wrong. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, when I, I sit in the cat room, I just don't, I do my meditation and I let them do whatever they want to do. Um, sometimes they'll nudge me for a little pet and then they'll walk away. And sometimes they'll want to be in my lap and everybody else might be coming around and they might get in a fight. I've had that happen. That's how I wound up with Bo, my cat. <laughs> it was my, I got at the shelter. I was sitting and doing my meditation and there were two cats on, um, on a cat tree right next to me. And then Bo was with them and two cats were fighting behind Bo and he was just all chill. <laughs> so I was like, that's the cat for me. So they were just getting into it. So we have to also be 
um, mindful of our, you know, what's, you know, what could happen to us, because when they get into a state, um, they can reach out and hurt us with those claws. So, um, so just really keeping the hands off um, when I'm in the cat room um, is really important because they're roaming free. So I want to be sure that um, as I'm sitting there, you know, kind of keeping an eye on things, but I'm also not reaching out. I let them come to me and then I might pet them. I've had cats crawl up me and hang on my shoulder. And I've had several cats on my lap at one time. I've had cats get a bite on my lap. So, you know, all of those things happen. And um, and what you were talking about, Leah, with, um, what's the kitty's name? Boots, Bootsy. Boots, Bootsy. So they, um, you know, they get excited. Sometimes they don't know how to shut it off. And I see that with my my cat, Bo, who... Once you, you see him ramping up, you've got to shut it down immediately or he's just going to keep going. So um, so I think, you know, some of the things that when we when we're sitting with cats, um, things to observe, obviously, are the big eyes, uh, the ears back and um, and also don't make eye contact with those cats. Right. I don't make eye, eye contact with them until you know, they come over and they're looking at me and looking in my face or looking for pets. Um, and then also um, we want to be, what else do we want to do? Let's see. So we want to be sure that they feel comfortable. We don't try to engage them at all. If in any way they look like they're um, uncomfortable or weary or definitely scared, the big eyes, you know, can be scared, fear or, or anger or whatever. Um, the hissing, obviously. So we don't want to engage them in any way. So if I see a cat hiding behind the litter box in the kennel or even in the cat room, sometimes that happens there, um, I just leave them be. I don't try to get them to come out. Um, I just let them come around at their own pace if they do. Um, you know, sometimes I'll go in two or three times um, over, you know, two or three weeks and find, finally start to see, you know, a difference in that cat. And the thing that's so beautiful about it is people love cats to get in their lap, right? They want a lap cat. They want all that love. So when you're able to spend some time um, helping that cat get comfortable with humans um, and they start getting in your lap, you usually aren't there after, you know, the next time you come because they have been adopted because somebody's come in, sat down and they're like, oh, I'm going to get in your lap. Exactly. So even when they're in my lap, I'm not engaging with them. You know, a lot of times, sometimes they just want to lay in my lap. They don't want to be touched. And if I start touching them and the tail goes, I hands off. I don't put them down though. I just let them stay where they are. And a lot of times they'll come and stay for as long, you know, for a couple of minutes and then they'll leave and another cat will come or they'll fight with the uh, cats around me on the floor, like kissing at them. Don't come any nearer. This is my time, which is really funny. But I see that same thing with my own cats. I have, um, I have an 18 year old cat, Elsie, who's got some health issues. And um, and then my cat, Bo, the orange, my big orange boy. And Bo is my meditation cat. He loves to come and sit with me when I meditate. And um, so I'll go down to the meditation room and I'll have my coffee and my phone. And he comes running down after me. I sit down, he gets in my lap and he stays through the whole meditation. And then my little Elsie, she'll come occasionally. So sometimes she'll come two or three days in a row and then she'll stop coming. But this... Um, since she's been not feeling well, she comes almost every day and sits in my lap for Reiki. And um, and I love that, um, you know, I'm not forcing it on her. I'm just inviting her to join me if she wants. And she comes and gets in my lap um, whenever she feels ready. Some cats are just, you know, she's always been kind of like, you know, she's a tortie. So she's got some fortitude. So she's just sort of like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And then all of a sudden she's like, mm, not feeling too good today, mom. And she'll come for a few days and then she'll be fine again. She'll just wander off. I don't see her in meditation for a while, but Bo is a, he's a regular, he's a regular. I love that. Thank you, Kelly. So I think that like, you know, when we're talking about like, let's say you're going to someone's home, mm -hmm. they have a cat. Cause that's kind of a, um, Oh, Carolyn says, I miss my advocate. And I also want to say, and I, I just hope I get everybody here because I know that some people came in and I just want to go back to gallery for a minute. But I know Cindy, um, Colette, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us and Sharice. So when we're talking about, you know, cats 
as Kelly said, there's a lot of things that we need to take into consideration, right? We don't ever want them to feel fearful of us. And like Kelly said, that's the let animals lead way, right? We go in, we want to be as non-intrusive as possible. If you're going to sit, you know, I used to go um, at the Humane Society of Silicon Valley here, they had a, a sick room and there would be cats in the cages. And I would just sit in the middle of the room with my head down and meditate. And then the cats, like some cats would be hanging out of the cages, like they're armed. They want to get as close as possible, but then some cats are still back. Um, so we want to just make sure what is our energy? What are we doing? Which is why in the let animals lead method, we learn lots of different ways that we can balance our energy and create a nice, safe healing space. But when we go into someone's house, right? And they have certain expectations of what this is going to look like. And so we have to say, okay, you know, I'm going to allow your cat to go in and out of the rooms. Your cat doesn't have to be in here with me. We have to start setting expectations when we're going to offer Reiki to someone else's cat. We also don't want to be in a position like if they go, oh, well, I'm going to put you in this room with the cat and I'm going to shut the door. That's not really ideal, but it, let's say that that's what they want. Then you just want to make sure that you're in a position where you're not like Kelly was saying, you're not staring at them or you're not in any type of threatening position. We always want to be in a really passive and open position and also get ready to get up and move. I remember one time at the shelter, they wanted me to go work with this cat that was a biter. And I was like, oh my God, this is my worst nightmare come true. So I'm like, okay. And I go in there and I'm sitting cross-legged. I'm like, oh my God, and he's a big tabby. He's huge. I'm like, please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. So I'm, I'm trying to meditate and just be all Zen. I'm like, you know, I really respect you. You're a big cat. And, and I, I just, I, you could hurt me. And so I'm just going to be very passive. So I kept my hands to my side and he kind of came and he butted, you know, his head. And I was like, okay. And I kind of just like touched him and like, okay. And then he laid there and he didn't bite me, thank God. And then somebody walked by and he got irritated and he kind of like growled. And so I just kind of scooted back and he jumped off my lap and I stood up at that point. And so I just stood up and I kind of faced away from him. So it wasn't like I was standing up because I didn't feel safe on the floor anymore. I didn't want to stand up and be over him, right. um, but I wanted to stand up. And so I turned my body. So there's it's just, I think, don't you agree, Kelly? It's it's kind of common sense. You just want to never be a predator. You want to act like prey like they do. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, especially um, not even just in a, a shelter situation, but, you know, you're going into somebody's home and that's the cat's territory and they don't know you. And some cats are okay with that, but a lot of them aren't. And um, so they'll hide under the bed or something. And, um, and so, you know, it's it's even kind of, more challenging than when we go and do a session, for instance, for a dog, because dogs are usually like, we want to check the, that person out. They might be kind of in and out, but a cat might stay under the bed for the whole session. So it's always good to just let the person know, you know, this is really boring if you want to watch, but you're welcome to sit, you know, and meditate with me and be in that, you know, be in that peaceful space. And, you know, again, we feel, we, we also think that, um, you know, having the person sit in that meditation is really helpful for both the person and the animal in their relationship. And if they don't want to meditate, you know, in the let animals lead way, and I think the other lineages, they teach the chair treatment. Mm -hmm. So you can do the person, the, the, the parent, the guardian, and give them a chair treatment. And a lot of times the animal will then relax, like the cat will come out because they see, oh, my, my, guardian trusts this person. So maybe I can trust this person. But again, it's really about being as, you know, non-intrusive as possible. You really want to watch your energy and what are you doing? And so like, again, going back to the person's house, like you said, Kelly, it's going to be really boring. Or maybe if the cat leaves completely, you're like, oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's fine too, because they could really just go into the next room and fall asleep out there. It's just wherever they're comfortable. So always setting expectations for the humans that this, what this might look like. And also getting the human involved is a really good thing to do because the human is sometimes the issue. I can't tell you how many times you do a chair treatment on the human and the animal goes, oh, thank God. Thank God. They need it. I'm so muted. They need it. So, so it's just being really aware of that 
So wherever you are, just keeping yourself safe. One of the things that's really dangerous about cats is if they bite or scratch you really deeply, it can cause a very bad infection, um, life-threatening infection sometimes. So, you know, you just always want to make sure that you keep yourself safe. And I think that, you know, there's a, there's a deep respect for cats that I have mm -hmm. because of that. Right. And so I think just bringing that into your heart and into your being that I have deep respect for you, you could hurt me, even if it's a really passive cat, um, you know, just always just having that awareness that we don't know how they might act. And so then Carolyn says, I miss my nabby cat um, meditation buddy. Oh, thanks, Carolyn, for sharing that. Yeah, you know, cats are are really interesting beings. I mean, they go back all the way to the beginning of time. I, when I was young, I was obsessed with the Egyptian cats. I think my mom took me to an Egyptian um, exhibit when I was like four. And I was just obsessed with the cats. I mean, I love cats. I've always had cats. But when you sit and do Reiki with the cats, it's a little different. And, you know, like I said, my sister's cat just bit me and he's a biter. So I always have to say, you know, please don't bite me, but he doesn't really listen. Well, you know, I think we always have to approach them with the thought in our head that they're scared of us, even if they aren't, but just go from that, you know, that, that place that, you know, they don't know who we are, or even, you know, um, even if we've been to the house before, just always going like it's brand new, you know, it's a brand new situation for the cat. And and I do find them just so incredibly sensitive to everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking about people, you know, doing chair Reiki and stuff. I also do human Reiki. So uh, people would come here and get on the table and my cats would come down and Bo especially would love to be on the table with the person or sometimes Elsie when she was younger. Um, and I've had, um, I've had place times I've gone to the person's house and their cat would come and get on them and lay down on them while they were receiving Reiki. So they, they really love to be in that energy. Um, it's just a matter of how close they want to be really, or, you know, if it's that time. So, um, yeah, so, letting you know, like you were saying the cat in the other room, that cat is, that's the comfortable distance, right? For them to maybe not, e not even feel like they want to receive it, but to assess the whole situation. Like, what is this? What's going on here? Exactly. And so Eileen asks, um, how about two cats that fight and we have to keep them separate? We have a gate where they are separated, but they fight with their paws. My cats usually are oblivious to Reiki. So, you know, in that situation too, um, a couple of things. I'm not sure if someone else has come to your house, Eileen, to share Reiki. Um, I don't know if, if you're a let animals lead um, method practitioner, but for that, you know, cats have a right not to like each other, just like people sometimes yeah. don't like each other, right? Well, we want to keep them safe. See, what happened was, to make a long story short, in COVID, we got two cats, you know, a black and white one, Rowan, who is very, you know, tough, and a calico. Those two are fine. They came from the same litter. They came from the same people. They will rescue. Two years later, which was a year ago, my neighbor had to emergently get rid of her orange cat, you know, a male kitten that was two years younger because the landlady wouldn't let them keep it. So we took the cat in. My husband's in love with that cat, but the black and white cat and the orange cat are fighting each other. We try to separate them and trade areas. We give, we're giving the black and white cat Prozac, mm. uh, which has helped with kit with um people he doesn't run away with people but not the black and white cat we don't want them to necessarily have to like each other but we want the orange cat to be safe yeah mm -hmm. and i mean i'm not sure if when you're offering reiki if you're doing it with a, a oh i want you guys to like each other right we want if we're offering reiki to cats for any situation it's best for us to just meditate and share that beautiful energy of love and light, right? With no expectation of the outcome. We want the animals. The person, to yeah. Right. So like, you know, just giving reaffirming messages too, when you're saying, you know, I love you. I see you. You're safe. Right. Those are things that you can say that are true. Um, and then it's, it might just take some time. I, you know, obviously talking to a cat behaviorist is a good idea. Um, you know, we always recommend Reiki can do so much, but a lot of times with behavioral problems, 
going and talking to an actual expert on behavior is really helpful because they give you insight and background that you may not get from a vet or even, you know, um, just someone who has cat experience. You know, when you go to a behavior or behavioral expert, they really have a lot of really wonderful information. But again, if you're sitting there with your cats and you're sharing Reiki, let go of all expectation of what you want to happen and just send love and light from your heart. And I think that that might, uh, might help, but I would love to hear how that goes. I don't know, Kelly, if you have something. I, I actually have a similar situation, which Lee has heard over the years and um, with my cat, Bo, who's an orange cat. And he was younger when we got him than Elsie okay. and he wanted to take over. And um, he, um, over the years, you know, I've done a lot of Reiki with him. And he, like I said, he gets Reiki all the time because he's my meditation buddy. Uh, but he would still, you know, jump on her and she's smaller. Um, in the end, I, you know, lately we've been using um, Bully Solution and that's working pretty well um, along what with the Reiki. Holy... What is it called? Yeah, it's, it's called Bully Solution. It's Jackson Galaxy. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's just a little, you know, little um, essence, flower essence kind of thing you put on them or put in their food. And that okay. seems to have calmed them down, but also aging, you know. I mean, you've got a two-year-old orange cat and they're going to, you know, push the boundaries for sure. Yeah, my, my cat is two, my orange cat is two years old, but the other cat is four. Yeah, so there's a territory thing probably going on Right, there. and that's what my son thinks, you know. Like we took this cat, he thinks we did the wrong thing. We took this cat in emergently because mm -hmm. he would have had to go to a shelter if we yeah. didn't take him in. I would try and that, we, you know, talk to a behaviorist. Um, you know, we we separate them to eat even, you know, still. Yeah, that's what we do. Later, so like the orange cat lives behind, you know, we have a three bedroom ranch house. The orange cat lives behind and a 10 foot gate, you know, in the hall. The orange cat lives behind that where the three bedrooms are and we have a litter box for him in the bathroom and the other two cat the calico goes back and forth she's fine with everything and the black and white cat is the rest of the house and we spend a few hours a day you know switching sides with the black and white cat and the orange cat you know yeah. is his name yeah, I would, I would, you know, maybe talk to a behaviorist in the meantime, you know, keep the Reiki up, but as Leah said, just keeping it very open and expansive and not having any kind of expectation or um, wish for a result. You know, you just want to let that energy flow and let them take what they need from it. Okay. Yeah, always making sure that, you know, we have agendas a lot of times and those agendas are energy. And so mm -hmm. we're going in like, oh, you know, there's a problem. You're a problem is basically what we're saying. You're a problem. And we don't ever want to say that to an animal. We always want them to feel supported and loved and important and seen. And even right? to a person. Right. Exactly. Because I have a, you know, a person, you know, a human practice. You know, I do mostly, yeah. you know, people. Yeah. So, and you know, just going inward, don't, don't go outward. So, oh, thanks for writing that, Kelly. So I'm um, Eileen, thank you so much. I'm going to go on because I know that Claudia has, a, um, okay. uh, uh, Claudia had a little story that I was hoping she would share. I'm going to put you on mute real fast. Hey, Claudia. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Got me a card there. I was just typing oh. to Eileen, wondering if her cats were spayed or neutered, because that might sometimes help if they are territorial. But yeah. Uh, okay. And then, yeah. So then they're just cats being cats. I... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, so, Claudia, you had an experience that I would love for you to share. Yeah. Okay. So we 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 foster cats and dogs and rabbits for the SPCA, the local SPCA here in Halifax. And um, so at one point we were fostering um, Spencer, tabby cat. His owner had just passed away, and he was 15 years old. And I know it's it's against the rules, right? But I felt so sorry for him. <laughs> so, so and well, we took him home, gave him Reiki. He really responded to that, loved it, made him very relaxed. Just like Kelly told, just sitting in the room, just meditate and let him be him. But at one point, my old Reiki habits 
took over, if you know what I mean. So I, I before I learned this method of letting animals leave, I just used human Reiki on pets, right? And then wondering why they didn't like it and would walk off. And so at one point that old method took over again and, and I felt him pulling away. So, which was, yeah, a bit disappointing to me, but okay. <laughs> And then um, the time came to take him back to the shelter because we were only supposed to keep him for four weeks uh, to, you know, um, assess his behavior and give him his medication. He was on a, a antibiotics for four weeks. So when that was all behind us, we had to take him back. And again, that feeling sorry for him started to overwhelm you know, against my better judgment because he wasn't pathetic or or I didn't need to feel sorry for him. But here I was feeling sorry for him. And I could just tell that he started to get annoyed with me. Well, anyway, so I told the shelter, if he's still here in about a week or two, I can take him back and shelter and, and foster him until there's a, a adopt from foster candidate, if you know what I mean. So you can foster cats. And then when there's a, someone who wants to adopt him, they can adopt him from your home. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. After two weeks, he was still in the shelter. And I was like, Okay, do you want me to take him back home? Because again, I started to feel so sorry for him. And the lady said, oh, he's actually doing quite fine. When we got there to pick up another foster, he was still there. So I was like, okay, can I go and see him then at least? She said, yeah, sure. So, so I went to his kennel and he was just laying there. And I again, it was like, oh my God, the poor thing. He's depressed. My God, oh, Spencer, I'm so sorry put my hand in his kennel and bam, he was like, no, <laughs> F off, right? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay. So that only confirmed my idea that he must have been depressed, right? <laughs> so got home to email the lady again. I said, well, I think he should come back to us in foster. She said, no, no, really, he is fine. Well, I just didn't believe her. Anyway, long story short, that night, I was doing a, a meditation with my new foster cat and I also included Spencer. And um, just like, you know, if you want to join, please feel free to join because still I thought he was depressed. He needed my help. And I was in that meditation. I did the do not for today only do not worry meditation. Right. And all of a sudden I just heard, well, not heard a voice, but had this feeling. It was Spencer telling me, would you please stop it? I am okay. And for me, that was like, okay, wow. And I, it was like a weight fell off my shoulder. I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And two days later, he was adopted. But so I know it's a bit of a ramble, but it that was such a weird experience. Like, no, that wasn't a ramble. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that so much because Claudia, I, I love how, when he swatted you, you know, yeah. he's like, Hey, I don't need to go with you. He told you right then and there, but isn't that, I love, you know, cause we're all human people. We are all human. This happens to all of us. We're like, Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, I dropped my gut. And instead, and I love that so much because again, we teach this in our classes when you quiet your mind, it's not like we're trying to do animal communication. It's not like we're trying to, to communicate this way. When you quiet your mind, things can come through. And very clearly, that's happened to me before too in a, in a different situation where a, a dog was getting adopted. But the same thing, it's like, it's like it, you wanna say you hear it, but you don't really hear it. It's just like, boom, it's a message. No, you know, or yes, or whatever that is. And thank you so much, Claudia, because. I love you being so honest about this because it's like our ego takes over, right? Yes. I mean, you were concerned yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I projected my feelings on him, right? And he wasn't having it. Like, no. Right. And, and love that story. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that because it's a reminder for all of us to be really mindful when we're going to sit with any animals, but especially cats, right? They're highly sensitive. And, you know, they, they're they trying to tell us, 
in their little way, just like dogs do and horses do. But, you know, we've got to listen. We got to stop being in that worry. And we're in this whole thing. We think, oh, we humans know more. We see more. And actually we don't. There's so and, and, much. And ahead. also, and also me thinking I knew more than the lady who actually worked with them every day in the shelter, right? She told <laughs> yeah. me time and time again, no, no, he's doing fine. And so I was like, no, 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 he's not. <laughs> right? So that's when we look at what he got, what he triggered in you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's when you look at what he triggered in you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I had, um, I, I think that's a really great story, Claudia, because it's also important to, to, um, to know that, you know, when we're, if we are going into a shelter or work with the animals, sometimes we, whether we want to or not see the history of the animal. Um, when I used to, when I first started at Rutland, um, I would read like, oh, this cat, you know, his name is blah, 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 is this old. And well, we were doing that, um, that research at the time in the beginning, Leah, right? So I would take notes on the cats and like, oh, this is where, he, you know, he was astray or he was surrendered or whatever. And, um, and I discovered it was really getting in the way of me just being there peacefully without an agenda and without having it bring up all kinds of stuff in me. I had to really work on my own stuff to be able to sit peacefully and not, um, you know, think of the animals that had passed in my life and all of that sort of thing. And, um, and eventually I just stopped even looking now, you know, for a while there, they would have cards on the panels that would say oh, owner surrender or stray or um and then you know that's I have to just really ground myself for that because it I would do the same thing I'd be like oh I, you know, I want to take everybody home right I mean that's just the nature of going into the shelter to help the animals and um and so have it would get in my way every time so it wasn't until I let go of what their history was what how they got there that I was able to have a, more of a peaceful connection with them and not bring my own stuff into it. But but I did a lot of, I had to do a lot of personal work on that too. Well, and I think that that's such a good point. The only way we can be of service to the animals is if we do the work on ourselves. Because mm -hmm. like Claudia and like Kelly and you know, like me, all of us have experienced that. And like Nancy says, she gets quit worrying from her older cat all the time, right? Because <laughs> we as humans are worriers. And a lot of times when the animals are in the shelter, I mean, they have everything they need. What we can do as Reiki practitioners, as animal Reiki practitioners, is we can then say, I see you, you know, I, I love you. I'm so happy to be here with you. We can start then support, supporting their emotional needs. So they have food, they have water, they have shelter, they have enrichment, they have all the things, medical care. And so now as Reiki practitioners, if we can get out of our own way and let go of feeling sorry for them, now they can turn around like Spencer and actually have a good time and say, oh, you know what? I get to pick my person. You know, we empower the animals to then have that confidence where, oh, I don't have to wait for somebody to pick me. I can pick my person. And so just keeping that in mind that when you go into the shelter or if you're, even if you're not offering Reiki in the shelter, if you go to a shelter, you're thinking about, you hear stories about animals and shelters, always be sure to send positivity and love and light and know that all is well, right? Because if we send worry, what does that do? It's not healing. So um, let me see here. And so Claudia says, yeah, I just wanna make sure that we're getting everything. So um, now I'd like to open it up to you guys. Cause I know that some of you, let me go back to uh, speak gallery view so I can make sure that we get anybody's hands. But you know, if you have something you wanna share, I would we would love to hear from you and comment just like Eileen and Claudia and Claudia that was such a great share I'm so glad you did that because who has not been there oh my gosh so many times we think we know best and I love how Nancy said her her cat's like don't worry <laughs> oh and then mm -hmm. Diane says is there a particular type of meditation that seems to be generally more helpful for cats especially one who is nearing the end of her life I wouldn't say there is a particular meditation for cats what I would say for yourself is Find a meditation that helps you go inward and let go, be it a mantra, just saying all is well, all is well, or maybe it's the precepts, maybe picking one precept for today only, do not worry. 
and doing that for yourself or whatever it is. Maybe you're listening to a guided meditation, anything that can help you let go of all expectations and let go of that lock in, right? We, we try to lock in sometimes to the animal. If you can let that go, because what happens is when we go inward and it's counterintuitive, when we go inward and let go of our anger and our worry and our expectations, our energy goes outward. So if you look at anger and worry as like shields around you, no light can get out, right? So you're the sun, but you're completely shielded in because you've got worry, you've got anger. But when you can let those go, now your light shines brighter. That is what the animals are connecting to. They're not connecting to you doing a special meditation or a special healing. What they're connecting to is your light and your love. And so by doing the precepts or by doing a mantra and going inward, your light becomes brighter and brighter and brighter going outward. And so um, Nancy says, how about distant Reiki with cats? Any particular insights or tips? And yeah, of course, Diane, uh, you're welcome. I think that in Kelly, you probably have something to say about this too. It's for, for me, for distant Reiki, I, I like it better. It's easier because I don't, I'm not sitting in front of the animal. I'm not focusing on what's wrong. So what I like to do is either do the chanting, you know, which is what you learn in level two and three, or doing a mantra or listening to like, I love Kathleen's medicine Buddha chant. And I think you can still get that on her website. And if you can't get it on our website, let me know and I'll find out how you can purchase it. But her medicine Buddha was created for her brother-in-law that was going through uh, brain cancer. And um, it is such a beautiful chant because it, the medicine Buddha is a very ancient Buddha and it's, it's all about healing and it's a very beautiful chant. But so what I'll do for distant Reiki, especially for an animal that's getting ready to pass, I'll do the medicine Buddha, not only to help the animal just feel supported and secure, but to help myself to let go of my attachments and my worries and to really just get into that space of a chant, you know, it's, and it's a very simple chant, the medicine Buddha chant, um, cause she does a more simple one. I know that there's others that are a little longer and a little more difficult. Cause I, I found one yesterday from David Michi and I'm like, oh, this one's a little too hard for me. So I go back to hers, but there is a way that you know, we can go inward and now our energy is even stronger going outward. So always setting your intent that you're dedicating this practice to this animal and then let go of all thoughts. Because when you set your intent, the minute you think of an animal, they feel it. We don't think that because we're human. We've got limited mindset. We're like, oh, my energy only goes this far. No, you think of the animal. I'm dedicating this to you. And now you go inward, you do the medicine, but you do whatever you need to do to go inward or maybe listening to a guided meditation and now your energy is going outward. So Kelly, I, I want to give that over to you for a minute. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love doing distance sessions as well because you're not, like you were saying, Leah, you're not focused on the surroundings and what's happening with the animal and everything. You can really be present and in that space um, deeply. Um, I love the chanting as well, but I don't, um, what I, I noticed is sometimes my cats like it, sometimes they don't because I do a lot of chanting in my regular practice, not necessarily when I'm doing a session with them, but um, sometimes they'll take off. <laughs> Other times they're just like, okay, whatever. Bo's usually pretty cool about it, but Elsie's more sensitive about you know the chanting part. Um, but also I'd like to just mention that, I, you know, I can't stress enough how, how helpful it is to have a friend do the session for you when an animal is getting ready to transition. Um, or support you with um, with sessions um, during illness from the animal because when they're when they're in our parts right it can be so hard to completely let go of what you you know the needed outcome you know we want them to get better we want them to be you know well and back to their old selves but you know that a lot of times that's just not the outcome and it can be hard to distance from that so um, so, you know, having help, I mean, I had Judy helping um, this week with Elsie and, and she had a wonderful experience where she felt Elsie just jumping in her lap and, and receiving from her. And I'm like, damn, I never feel that. I mean, she, she might be in my lap but when I'm doing distant Reiki. It was really funny. So, um, so it's, it's helpful to, you know, take a step back and let, you know, somebody else do that for, you know, for you. 
but also short sessions if they're transitioning. They don't need to be an hour of Reiki, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there just to support them along their way. Yeah, definitely. That's really good advice. And Susan, I know you have, you are unmuted. I'm going to get you in just one second. I just want to get to the comments. So Ava says that she has witnessed that her cat like crystals and sweet grass um, as supportive elements of Reiki. And that's really nice too. You know, if you can have the things that you know that they're drawn to when you're sitting there, that could be a uh, really supportive. So thank you for suggesting that. And then Carolyn says when her cat was near end of life, <clears throat> she noticed that he purposely sought me out more often during the day for a quiet meditation together. <clears throat> Thank you, Carolyn, for bringing that up because that is so true. Animals will come to us. Like Kelly was saying, when Elsie, she's not feeling good, she'll come to her. I know that my dog, Bruce, he never wanted to be around me when I did Reiki. He always wanted me to focus on myself, which, you know, he was a great teacher, but if he was feeling sick, he would definitely come and lay all like put his body all against mine. Um, so animals know that beautiful healing energy and they know how to ask for it if we're paying attention. And then Cherise says, Oh, her camera, whoops, her camera in hand <clears throat> isn't working, but I have a story about my scout and medicine Buddha town. Okay, great. So let me get to Susan and then we will um, call on you Cherise. So Susan. Um, yes. I, I, <laughs> you've said so much that I just think it's wonderful. I'd love to respond to all of it. But I want to tell you uh, a, a short story about the most recent cat that I have adopted from a shelter. And let me just back up just one sentence is, since I'm so old, I'm mid 80s now, and I have decided that my occupation for the rest of my life is going to be rescuing a cat from, and I singular, only one cat at a time in the house, um, from a shelter, and it has to be a cat who is at least 14 years old. And it also has to be a cat that um, is percep perceptibly in unadoptable. In yeah. other words, either is adopted, but turns around it's a revolving door type of thing. So I tend to go to shelters when I'm looking for a cat following your advice of let animals lead. And I also have found for myself that when I do meditation, a solo meditation, um, there's an afterglow that I can't explain and I've never heard anybody talk about. But when I come out of meditation, my body is still in meditation. So I try now to go into a shelter having meditated in the parking lot <laughs> before I go in. And uh, Great. I went in and I told them why I was there. And I said, I would just like to look at whatever senior cats you have. They had one. And this cat was withdrawn, was not, not very receptive to being patted. She still isn't, but that's okay. Um, but she did look at me curiously and start to come up to me. And I said, you know, she's mine. I'll, I, I, I want to adopt this cat. So we went through the whole procedure. I brought her home in uh, my big carrier. So they have lots of room. And um, she, I, I put her, I incarcerated her in the bathroom with her box and food and water and a, 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 like a bookshelf of all my towels and uh, sheets. And it's just, it's just all my linen stuff. That cat tore that shelving apart. I, I don't know how she managed to climb up vertical shelves, but she did to hide. She was so scared, but I started instantly with my let animals lead. And I'd already planned this and I did it. I did not ask her to do anything. I did not reprimand her for anything. I told her this is her house. She's the boss. I am your servant and I will keep your box clean and I will feed you lots of good food. And that's it. And she just sort of hunkered back and you could tell she didn't believe a word of it. So the first week was pretty, pretty rough. Okay. But day by day, there were little increments of opening up. 
And I don't know if you've ever adopted a cat that has been abused, but their their eyes are hard and staring and they don't blink. They don't. I, so I but I let her be herself on day five. She was sitting on a stool in the kitchen and I was talking as I went by her to say, oh, she's so beautiful and I'm so glad she's here. And she reached out and put a paw on my arm. And I, I didn't know what to do. But when I looked at her, her eyes were soft. And I, I practically cried on the spot. But that was the game changer. Now that was middle of January. And all I can tell you is things have gotten better ever since. And it's all because of letting animals lead. Like I, you gals, I'm, I, I, there's no way to ex express my gratitude for the teachings that you do on this. Oh, thank you. thank you so much, Susan. I know we're so lucky that Kathleen created this system because it works. It's, it's so powerful yeah. and bless your heart for taking on these older animals, these older kitty cats. And I just love, I love to, too. It's like, you're right. It's let animals lead. If they want to tear down the whole bathroom, then that's what they're going to do. But yeah. I love that you gave her that space. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. so beautiful. Anyway, that's it. Well, thank you for that. I love that. And, and keep us posted. I, and I, you know, Susan's one of our biggest fans for let animals lead, but she's seen how it's worked for her so many different times. And so, you know, if you don't know the let animals lead method, I really encourage you to study. We have all kinds of online classes, um, in-person classes. So be sure to study this. So thank you. And now uh, Sharice, I think we have time. Yeah, we have time for one more and then we'll do a, a meditation at the end. Hey, Sharice. I don't know Hi. You... Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry that the camera and I don't know, the system okay. is all wacky. No but worries. I just um I just wanted to speak because Scout, Lee, and you know Scout. Scout was uh my healer and she was my teacher and she still is. She's still with me all the time. I have countless stories. It, it's incredible. Uh, her energy. She had a, a golden aura, um, which was really unique. But she um when she was she for all of that sensitivity and healing nature, she did not like Reiki if I did anything that came near to like people Reiki. So, you know, in the beginning, even though I knew the animals lead method, she was my cat, she was with me all the time. So the hands would go out, I want to do like a voice and scan or something. As soon as I, no matter how high I raised that hand, even if she couldn't see it, she would get up and leave. She could be sound asleep next to me and she would get up and walk away. And so I quickly learned that she definitely doesn't, if I did my Reiki let animal lead method, she was always with me and she liked to be near, but not on me, which was weird because usually she would be on me. So energy, targeted energy like that, she was just highly, highly sensitive. But the Buddha chant, when she was passing, um, the day she was passing, I had actually texted Leah in a, in a bit of a panic. And I was like, I need something. I need a chant. I need a transition chant. She's actually transitioning now. And so you gave me the Buddha chant and I had that. So she was on me for six or seven hours. She passed on me and through me, really, I could feel her go. Um, but I tried the, during one of those hours, she was just on me the whole time. I put on the chant and for the first time she lifted up her head and agitated and she lifted her head and I had it on softly and she looked around and she tried to get up to get off of me. So I turned it off. I said, okay, I'm going to wait a little bit. So a couple hours went by and I said, maybe she was just her medication hadn't kicked in or not. So we were just laying there and I, I put it on just very softly. I mean, so softly, barely I could hear it. And again, her head popped up. There was an agitation and a, like a trembling almost in her body. So I turned it off and for whatever, I don't know. And it was, I was laughing because I, I don't know what it's actually saying, but whatever it is, she's not buying it. <laughs> it's like, I'm not into whatever that's telling me to do. So, but it was, um, yeah, this whole method uh, allowed me to to help her and she helped me transition together through this. So I just love you, Leah, and all of you here. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, and, and again, like a lot of times when we're lifting our hands, we want to like give something to our animals. They're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Just you are the one that needs this, not me. And so, you know, even playing the chanting, it's like, if you're trying to include her in it, it's like, she's like, no, 
this is, you know, we're fine like this. You don't need more than this, right? But we humans are like, oh, let's try this, let's try that. And and I love that because that's such a powerful lesson from Scout. And, you know, it's just a, a, another powerful lesson for all of us. You know, we hear from Claudia and from Susan and from Sharice. It's just animals are trying to show us but a lot of times we're like, oh, you know, we're too far in our grief or we're too far in our ego or whatever that is. So if we can step back when they're giving us that and go, okay, wait a minute, whoa, okay, what could they be trying to tell me? What is my ego telling me? And what are they telling me? Because your ego isn't right. Your ego is not anything. It's just like a worried mother saying, oh my gosh, you should do this, you should do that. And it's, it's not reality though. So we really want to quiet our ego, quiet ourselves and go, okay, what is happening here? So we're coming to the end and I wanted to, so Susan had made this great, fantastic um, recommendation when we did the loving kindness meditation that we should do this for the next month and then reconvene. We're, we were going to reconvene the first week of May, but that's, I'm going to be gone. Um, the week of the 17th, I'm traveling. So we're, <clears throat> we have to, I mean, I have to skip that week. So it kind of put everything back. So we're going to do the loving kindness recap uh, on May, I think it's like eight or something like that. So in preparation that I would love for us to do just a short loving kindness meditation. If you have to leave, no problem. Um, you can come back and, and listen to this on the recording, but if you can, um, I would love for you to stay and let's do a short loving kindness uh, meditation and just kind of get ourselves back into our bodies and also remind ourselves that our love is healing. You know, our love, our light are very healing. And if we can let go of our anger, our worry, all the things, our anxieties, and get back to our true core of who we are, then that is really where true healing takes place. And the animals show us that all the time, as we've heard today, right? Go inward and let your light shine. And that's what they're attracted to. So let us all bring our hands into Gosho. And we'll close our eyes to close out all outside distractions. And we'll set our intent that we're open to receive whatever it is that we need most at this moment in time. And let us dedicate this practice to any animals, people, or situations that need extra support. And if you just want to take a moment and bring them into mind and visualize them entering this incredibly strong and vibrant healing circle we're creating together. And whenever you're ready, you can bring your hands face up or face down on your lap. And we'll just do some cleansing breaths, breathing in deeply through your nose, pulling your breath deep into your belly, expanding your belly, and then slowly releasing your breath out your mouth. And just keeping that breath going, breathing in slowly, but deeply in through your nose and releasing your breath and all tension you're holding on to with your out breath through your mouth. The reason we breathe out our mouth is that it stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system and it really helps prepare us for our meditation. And now whenever you're ready, bring your breath and you're breathing back to normal. Just breathing in slowly through your nose and you can breathe out either through your mouth or your nose, whichever is most comfortable. And I'd like you to bring to mind something that brings you immense joy. It could be candy or it could be a person or it could be an animal, but something that brings you the most immense joy. And for me, that's bunnies and it always makes me smile. And so bring to mind something that is going to put a huge smile on your face. Bring joy and love into your heart. And when you have that feeling, allow yourself to just allow that feeling to expand within you with your breath. As you breathe in and out, just feel the love and joy cursing throughout your entire body filling up every cell of your being with love and joy. Now I'll repeat the script and you can just repeat it in your mind. May I be safe. 
May I be saved. May I be saved. May I be happy. May I be happy. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be peaceful. May I be peaceful. May I be well. May I be well. May I be well. May my heart be filled with love and kindness. May my heart be filled with love and kindness. May my heart be filled with love and kindness. Now I'd like you to bring to mind a person you love deeply that might be going through a challenge. We bring them to mind, we dedicate this meditation to them and we say, may you be safe. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be well. May you be well. May you be well. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. Now let's bring to mind someone in our neighborhood, someone that we know but not well. And let us dedicate this to them. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be well. May you be well. May you be well. And may your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. And now let us bring to mind a person that we might have difficulty with. Envision them and say in your mind, may you be safe. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be well. May you be well. May you be well. And may your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. May your heart be filled with love and kindness. And bringing it back to ourselves, may I be safe. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be well. And may my heart be filled with love and kindness. Bringing our hands into Gosho. 
we set our intent to end the meditation and we give thanks to ourselves for being here and for being open to this beautiful meditation and open to supporting the animals in our lives. Whenever you're ready, you can bring yourself back. You can rub your hands together. You can roll your eyes. So I changed up the loving kindness meditation a little bit because I felt that when I did the script, like the whole script three times, it's kind of like it didn't hit me as deeply as when I repeated each line three times. Because on the third time of repeating the line, especially with this, the person that I have difficulty with, I really started to feel it. And, and one thing that's really helped me with the loving kindness meditation, like I had to go to court to sue my ex-brother-in-law in small claims court. And it was really stressful. And so I did a dedication of loving kindness to him. And what really helps me to, to connect in that way, because I would, believe me, I'm so mad at this man. But what helped me connect to him was, you know, may you be filled with love and kindness. And that is a wish that I do wish for him, because if he were filled with love and kindness, he wouldn't act the way he did. And it's not like I'm trying to get him to feel, but it's kind of like I'm just sharing that, you know. So I did change it up a little. Play with the loving kindness meditation however you want. But for me, um, I hope that you enjoyed that. And I'm sure some of you were like, she's doing this wrong. <laughs> so I didn't mean to throw you. I should have said I was going to do it because I hate that when you're meditating and it's guided and they do something different. You're like, wait a second. That's not how we <laughs> so sorry if I pulled you out of it, but I did find that it is a lot for me personally, a lot more powerful to do it. So, you know, play around with it. There is no right and wrong, right? It's it, we, we like, we love rules, but um, yeah, we got to make it our own sometimes. So Carolyn, flexibility. pardon, flexibility. Exactly. Flexibility. Exactly. Thank you all so much for the comments. And so next week, you guys, we're going to talk about dogs. That is my jam. I love my dogs. So yes. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. This was a really wonderful talk um, for Claudia and for Eileen and Nancy and everybody who shared. Thank you so much. Um, and everybody who made comments like Ava and um, Carolyn and Monica, thank you so much. And Catherine and Anne, thank you guys so much. It's, this is a beautiful community. We're all learning together. Um, and it's the, you know, there's strength in numbers. So thank you all so much for sharing your light, for being here and for supporting this beautiful group. So we will see you next week. We're going to talk about dogs and then we'll have a break and then we'll come back and we'll talk about horses. And then we'll do our last, um, in the series will be on wild animals which kelly and i love and we've got lots of stories and oh, for the wild who, animals that's yes. my fear okay well they're amazing and wonderful and for those of you who have been to care i hope that you will um come and comment so thank you all so much thanks, thanks, thanks everyone bye -bye. Thanks. kelly thank you so much for being here and for sharing all your knowledge love you so much thank you so much bye guys thank you all bye -bye. thank you thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.